On today's Toy Spot, we're going to be having a look at the new Bandai Thundercats figures coming to us from the new Thundercats cartoon. Oh, it's so cool! Today we're going to be having a look at the leader of the Thundercats. We're looking at Lionel. Lionel comes to us from the 4-inch scale of figures. There's also the taller uh, deluxe figures as well that Lionel was packaged in. Magnetic Power Thunder Lynx featured with each figure. On the top corner there we've got Lionel. Made in China. Bandai.com. Bandai.com if you're interested. Checking out more information from Bandai. On the back of the package we got a picture of Lionel. Thundercats is an epic fantasy combining swords and science and boasting ferocious battles between good and evil. The same thing is written here in other languages as well. It says Lionel wields the Sword of Omens and leads the Thundercats to victory against Mumra, the ultimate villain. And down below you can collect them all. Of the interactive play sets, there is the Tower of Omens, there is the Lizard Cannon, you've got the Thunder Racer and the well, two Thunder Racers and the Thunder Tank. The only ones that I think I really got, I think the only one I really got of these was the Thunder Tank. I don't think I ended up picking up the Thunder Racers. Um, of the figures that you can get in the smaller scale, we have Tigra, we have Panthro, we got Chitara, Wily Kit, Wily Cat, and Mum Ra. Nice enough packaging, you really would want to keep it in, keep it sealed and just kind of have it on display. Of course, we're not going to do that here. No siree. What we're going to do is we're going to get this opened up, and we are going to have a look at Lionel. Stay tuned, guys. There is more on the way. And Lionel is out of package. Let's have a look at the figure. Before we actually look at the figure, let's look at, of course, at the accessories. One thing he does come with is the Thunder Claw, the Thunder Claw Shield. He also does come with a smaller dagger of the Sword of Omens. Really not a lot of paint on there. I would have been nice if, let's just zoom in here, right there, there we go. It would have been nice if they had actually just painted at least the Eye of Thundera in there, but it's just a solid red. Now you'll notice there is a hole in the claw. And there's a little notch in the back here. You can actually take the dagger and sandwich it in there. Just give it a bit of a snap into place. There we go. As you can see, you can snap the dagger into the claw. And you can hold it like that. You can take the claw and take Lino's arm and also snap that into place. doesn't hold very well unfortunately. You can have him holding the claw with the Sword of Omens in place. You can have it either or. His other accessory of course, oh don't fall Lino, don't, it's alright, it's alright man. We'll get into you, we'll get to you in a second. The other accessory he comes with is the longer Sword of Omens. Unfortunately, as you can see, extremely warped. So I would say maybe just take some hot water, soak it in the hot water, and just kind of warp it back, put it back into place, cool it off, it should be good as new. But one of the drawbacks, unfortunately, due to a softer, uh, rubbery material, is yes, it is inclined to warp a fair bit. I'm alright still with it because if it was still harder plastic you would run the risk of that breaking off on you. Uh, paint is still pretty bare on it. The Eye of Thunder once again is just a solid red. There's nothing else been added to it. I guess if you want to really take some paint you could do some extra paint work to it and just give it some extra oomph as it were. And these sort of omens you can put in Lino's hand. sits a little loose, but he still holds it. 
as you can see there. Take that off, take the glove off, the claw off, put that down. Let's have a look at Lino. The face, I think, is really cool. Uh, the face does look like uh, Lino from the cartoon. When I, when I heard that Bandai was, uh, was doing the licensing for this new uh, Thundercats cartoon, I, I was a bit worried. I'll level with you, I was a bit worried. In the back of my mind, I kept thinking to myself, when I heard that they were going to be doing a smaller scale of figures, I kept thinking to myself, oh no. Oh no, is it going to be as bad as the... Now, they, they didn't do it, obviously, but I was thinking in the back of my mind, oh, are they going to do it as bad as the Tron figures? Oh, those figures weren't the greatest. But I will say, Bandai did a fantastic job on this line. The paint on Lino is very clean. Really nothing to nothing bad to speak of. Um, yes, an ongoing problem that a couple of people have mentioned is the fact that the joints uh, where the pegs are uh, are just a solid black as opposed to actually just painting them in. Um, some areas like the shoulders, you can see that he, Lino's got holes in his shoulders, but I can easily overlook that because the figure as a whole is just really, really nice. Going back to the face, the face, I think, is uh, the fact that the eyes and everything else are colored in, the lines around the eyes are drawn in as well. They could have just <clears throat> could have put a couple of blobs of paint there and said, hey, there's eyes. But no, they've actually uh, done outlines on it, which I think have really added to the overall look and, and uh, high-end feel of the figures. I mean, the, these figures don't feel cheap. Speaking of, don't feel cheap. They actually have a fair bit of weight to them, too. They're not a very flimsy, small figure. In the way of Lino's articulation, he has a ball-jointed head. Or actually, no. Does he have a ball-jointed head? No, he doesn't. He has just a swivel in the neck. Hmm. Swivel in the neck. He does have a pin and socket shoulder, though. And the shoulders can move all the way around, in and out. Um, there is a rotation in the... No, no art... No, there isn't. There is just a hinge in the shoulder, or in the elbow. I actually thought that this was going to swivel as well, but it doesn't. There is, however, a swivel in the wrist. That is 100% sure. There is a swivel in the waist. The legs can bend forward and back. They can also bend out. They bend single in the knee. And no articula oh, there's a single bit of articulation in the ankle. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm all right with the fact that there's that single joint. I know uh, some people wish there was a swivel there, but the fact that there's a swivel in the forearm, uh, wrist area, and the fact that the elbow, the the uh, shoulders can move in and out. I mean, you still get a lot of movement and a lot of different poses you can get Lino into. Really like the figure. I do really like the figure. And I know, you know, you know me. I'm, I'm a little on the fence when it comes to smaller scale figures. Um, but I think the Lino here is really, really nice. The magnet is on the back here. But uh, I really got to commend. I got to commend Bandai. You guys did a good job on this figure. So much so I'm actually waiting. I can't wait to get the others opened and reviewed for you. In the meantime, though, Lino here, I think I'm going to give a, I'm going to give a 6.5 to. A really solid figure. Good clean paint. Not really a lot that I can say badly about it. The accessories are a little weak, but uh, and a little warped but uh, still a very solid figure. Today's Toy Spot, we were having a look at the Bandai new Thundercat line. We were looking at the 4-inch Lino. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more Toy Spots to come, and I'll see you guys next time.